Hey everyone, welcome back to Better Biomed. If I seem like I'm a little more excited than usual, that's because I'm back in ORs. I'm back in ORs, guys, and you guys should know, I love ORs. I've been doing this for 20 years, 19 of which have been in ORs. Today, I was brought in because I've got a light that has failed spectacularly, probably due to negligence, um, but I'm gonna swap out a light head. And you guys are here for the ride, okay? So let's go ahead and flip this around. I'll show you what I'm doing. That way there I can document the process and maybe you guys will learn something about lights. Mm, all right, guys, here we go. So uh, here is the replacement light head. This is a Deary, let's see, what's, what series is it? Hmm, the SLS 9000, that's right. Okay, so this is a Deary SLS 9000 and it broke right here at the knuckle. So right here, there's a rubber boot that normally protects it. And uh, on the other light head, it broke right up here in this collar. And you can see on this one, it's absolutely fine. Oh, sorry guys. So the other one, it broke right here the, in the casting. And let's see, it does look like it's a multiple layers of polymer yeah so it's got different layers of polymer underneath there but anyway you can see that that is damaged this is a uh two two light head room there you go so i'm gonna swing one out of the way so guys i always keep this orange cable in my tool bag and this orange cable uh this tension tie is because I use it often on surgical tables, but at the same time, I have almost broke my face because of surgical lights before. So as a precaution, whenever you're working around surgical lights, always tie them down. Uh, even if it's just, you know, tightening something down or whatnot, I've had the light head almost fall off before because as you're inspecting it, I've, I've actually found where these junctions are falling apart and I had the arm take off and almost took out my, my face. So anyway, I have had that before and uh, it is a spring-loaded arm, which means up in here, there's a tension spring and it is balanced accordingly so that when you position a light anywhere in the field, the spring arm it is compensating so that it doesn't drift down. And if your light drifts down, then you have to adjust it. There is a way to adjust all these spring arms. And you know, there's only a couple manufacturers of these arms. So I think Allendahl is one of the main manufacturers of these arms. So they're all very similar. Uh, other things to check, you can see right here, I've got my guard plates, my corner pieces are on, my bump cap down here at the bottom is working. Um, there's other things that you should check, like up there, those large flatheads. Those are tensioners for drift, for side-to-side -side drift. And actually, look at this light right here. This, in this direction here, it wants to drift a little bit. So, let go, and yeah, see, it does drift a little bit. Not too bad, though. So that would be an adjustment up here. And you can see also, right there, that would be a brush access cover, because these lights do not have wires that go all the way down. What it does is it has on the column, there are some uh, contacts. And then right there, there's some brushes and the brushes will rest on the contact. So you can rotate it all the way around and those brushes will guide it and keep the electrical continuity. So with lights, you either have commutators or you have brushes. So brushes are usually on the drop tube the commutators are usually what you find in the knuckles. So right here you can, you can see a version of a commutator and what that allows is you to rotate it and you can continue to rotate it. Without that, you'd have to have bump stops, which means you rotate it at certain degrees and then it will hit a bump and you rotate it back and it hits a bump. So a lot of manufacturers move to commutators. So let's see, yep, there's a bump stop and there's a bump stop. 
The reason we have bump stops in the light head is because some of the functionality is actually through wires. Actually, all the functionality is through wires. So on these particular ones, there is a bump stop. And it's something that should be checked during PMs. So not only drift, but you're also going to check the bump stop. Yep, there's one. There's the other. Okay. Now this knuckle right here. So notice it goes all the way around. No bump stop. That's because this knuckle right here is the commutator right here. All right. So what's going on is your electrical contacts are in here and they will rotate 360 degrees. And that is done through this knuckle. Now that you know that, now you know what we're going to do to change out this light head. So first thing, my tension strap, it's, it's tensioned down almost as far as it'll go. There's a tiny little Phillips screw in this one. Take that little screw out and it raises the cover. And now you see almost like a Woodruff key right here. Uh, there's a key there that's holding the light head on. So let me position the phone so I can pull that out and you guys can see what it looks like to uh, pull a light head. And we'll uh, go ahead and put the new one on. Okay, so right here is my key. And here is my cover. Now, usually I do this with needle nose, but on this particular one, I'm gonna, oh, there it is. Okay, so that's what the key looks like. Now, notice I'm holding on to the light head. There's nothing that is holding it on other than tension from the socket and uh, the electrical contacts. That's pretty much it at this point. So, this is where you have to be careful because the arm wants to go up, usually, except I got my tension, and the light wants to drop. So, what we do is we grab onto it, kind of give it a rotation, just like that. Mind you, keep this, this sleeve in the correct orientation because when we put the new light head on, it's got to go on first. So that's your light head, right there. There it is. So I'm going to go ahead and place this one off to the side. And let's go ahead and get the new light head. On the new light head, there's some things that we have to check first. One of them is you want to check for visual damage because if it's damaged, we're not going to install it. Uh, the other thing that we've got to check is we have to check to make sure the bump stops are working because if the bump stops are broke, that means the wiring might be broke. So I'm going to check it. It's good. Check the next rotation axis. It's good. Oh, okay. So this part here, I, I figured this part was going to be good, but uh, we always test before we install because once you install, there's usually no going back. So now we got the sleeve, that said, dries on it. Now this has to go up into the socket, nice and even. And this is often a little bit of a challenge. There we go. I'm gonna install it sideways like this because it's a lever, it wants to go in unevenly. There we go, up into the socket. We have the key, raise it up. We are going to drive in the key. That is it. Once the key's in, and we drop it back down. Install the little Phillips screw. This is extremely important, considering this tiny little screw technically keeps the light head from falling. Hand tension. Okay, and here, I'm kind of pulling down on it and I'm moving it, right? So I want to check it to make sure, just to be sure. All right, so, one of the things I didn't tell you guys is before I obviously did this, first thing I did is I locked out the breaker, which is here in the room. So, <laughs> you can, remove, especially LED lights, with a live circuit. It's low voltage, 
it, it'll be fine. But standard electrical practices is always disconnect the breaker. So that's what I did. Now let me go turn the breaker back on and let's see if our new light head is functioning. Let's do it. Breaker's on. I have a control panel. Yeah. All right. And at this time, let's see, I can move. Let's move it around. Let's make sure that the light doesn't cut out, which would mean bad, bad contacts up here. Um, so now it's safe to go ahead and remove my strap. And now I have to do a range of motion test to make sure that the light doesn't shut off. Okay, so here we are. You can see the control panel on these DOE lights. Looks really sketchy, doesn't it? See that control panel? Very cool. All right. So, let's go ahead and set it up. This is a range of motion. Make sure that the light doesn't cut out or dim. Okay, so that's your commutator, the 360 degree motion. Now we got this way, this way. This way and this way. All right. So now that we have that, one more thing that we got to change out between the light heads. Here's a Phillips screw. There you go. And this Phillips screw, I'm using a number one Milwaukee Phillips screwdriver. It's brand new and it's not wanting to match up. So, I don't know what type of Phillips that is, but definitely a little screwy. Ah. Okay. So, here we go. Here's your sterile handle. Cool stuff. So, it looks like there's a little bit of Loctite on the end. So, I'm going to put a little bit of Loctite on it. This one's going to get secured to the new light. And this light is good to go. Hope you guys like these kind of videos. Let me know if you do down below in the comments. And uh, maybe I'll do some more surgical light videos in the future. Thanks for watching, guys.